got him. Ooh, that might have been a big one. You know, normally I start my videos by saying what's cranking weeders because I'm in a good mood. I'm stoked to film a video, but uh, I've got nothing but bad news today. Apparently, while I was gone in Maine for a couple of months, the backyard pond took a bit of a decline. Check that out. We have lost so much water. I got back from Maine a couple days ago, as you know, we've been filming up there pretty, pretty rampantly, catching some good fish, cranking out some videos. And now that I've got back to Texas, I have to dress the elephant in the room, or in this case, the elephant in the backyard, and that is the fact that the backyard pond is, for lack of better words, struggling. Absolutely struggling. I don't know what happened. I guess we've had not a whole lot of rain and a bit of a drought in Texas this fall and early winter, and it has resulted in my pond looking less like a pond and more of a mud hole. I don't even need to say it, but this is just not good. If you guys have been keeping up to the pond videos, you know that it's gone through many different stages, mostly for the better, but now for the worse. I got this pond dug out in February of last year, or sorry, February of this year, and it looks great ever since. It took a while to fill up, but we had a couple really awesome rains in the spring. Once it filled up, I started stocking it with largemouth, a couple crappie, some bluegill, some bait fish, and it's pretty much thrived. We've, we've hand fed these bass, we've trained them. Um, we've got some big fish in here. I think the biggest bass in this little tiny backyard pond is around six pounds or maybe bigger now, and I don't know what to do. Last night, I checked out the pond. I was thinking to myself, there's, like, there's gotta be a solution. If we can't save the pond, let's at least save the fish in the pond. So I went on my Facebook neighborhood watch page and thankfully everyone in my neighborhood is super nice. Also thankfully everyone in my neighborhood, mostly everyone in my neighborhood has tanks and ponds. So what I did is I sent out a cry for help. I posted on the page that I've got a pond that is dying, but there's still fish in it. Is there any way that I could take some of the fish out of my sad looking ditch and relocate them into some healthier waters? Thankfully I had a couple of people that reached out in my neighborhood and said, absolutely take a couple of fish as long as it's not too many, relocate them in our deep pond, they should survive. So it's not good news for the pond, but at least we can, potentially save a couple of the bass in here. Uh, I've been growing these bass for almost a year now and I would hate to see them die just due to the fact that we're losing so much water. Furthermore, if there's any sort of suggestions that you guys have, drop a comment down below. I think the main issue and the obvious one is that uh, this pond is all rain fed. So, then when it's, so when it's not raining, it's not filling up and the Texas heat is extreme. It evaporates this water very quickly. As you can see, everything is turned to mud. Everything is dirty, it's gross. I think the biggest solution to this, which is probably not the easiest one, is to hit some sort of upwelling or dig deeper in the ground so there's a constant flow of water year round. But yeah, you live and you learn. This is the first time I've ever had a backyard pond and mm, it's not looking great, but we have a solution today or maybe a temporary solution to at least get these fish out of here and in fresher, cleaner waters. It's just sad to see my baby, my backyard pond that I've been working so hard for to create slowly deteriorate before my eyes. But you know, not all hope is lost. We always have more rain and uh, there's always many opportunities to fix something that is broken, but God, is it really broken? Anyway, that's our mission and goal today. We're gonna head over to Academy real quick to pick up some stuff in order to transport these fish from one pond to the other. I all right, we're at Academy right now. Gonna go pick up some stuff to transport these bass from my dying pond to a neighbor's much healthier pond, as I said before, but we gotta figure out a solution for these bass. I don't want them to die. We've been raising them pretty much since, I think like March. Some of them were stocked this summer, but a lot of them were stocked earlier this year and they've spawned and they've done good, but for whatever reason, they're not doing good right now. So we're gonna go to the Academy, pick up a cooler, some aerators, and then just about anything we need to get those fish out and do a new home. It's like a hat. It's also a makeshift sink. We might use this for catching cooks. How much is it, 24 bucks? Deal. Ooh, it's gonna be mucky out there. This might be the saving grace today. If we can't catch them with a hook and line, we're gonna need this. I don't think they'd sell something like this, it's crazy. The goods have been acquired. That was a pretty painless trip. We would've filmed more in there, but they were blaring uh, George Strait. No hate to that. We got a giant igloo cooler. This is a perfect size, very inexpensive cooler too, that we can load our fish up. I don't think we'll be able to transport all the fish today but we're gonna at least try to get a couple in there. If we can get the big ones, the big healthy girls, and we should be straight. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It's a sad day because we're gonna part way with our fish, but it's gonna be good because uh, these fish are gonna have a nice brand new home. That's gonna have a whole lot more water than my pond. All right, we'll meet you guys back at the crib. Well, we're back at the bass barn. We gotta figure out, this is the hard part. You gotta figure out how to safely and efficiently catch these fish. 
and then put them in the pond. It's way easier said than done. On paper, it makes sense and it should be straightforward, but it's not gonna be easy. We did buy like this huge seine net to seine some of the smaller bass, but I have a feeling that's gonna be difficult because even though the pond is shallow right now, it's gonna be super muddy and those fish are wily. Bass are insane, They're, they move so quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rig up like a rod or two to see if we can actually catch some in the face. That way it's just much more seamless and less messy. I think I'm just gonna bring a little, little swim bait. There's a lot of little minnows in the pond, so maybe this will this will do good. I'll bring a big swim bait too. I had I've had them eat big swim baits as well. I feel like it's gonna be tough. I don't know if they're they're probably gonna be hungry. They've not been fed in a while, so I'm hoping they fall for our soft plastics. Might as well bring some dead shad too. That's what they're used to eating: dead shad and and live shiners, live minnows. That's like their favorite snack. And then I don't even know what they eat when I'm gone. Probably insects, other little bluegill. Probably other bass. Bass are cannibals, so. Probably eating the other little bass that spawned this year. RIP the spawn. <laughs> it's kind of messed up. They're probably eating their own babies. Fish, the fish world is just so dark. It's very metal. You guys will have to let me know in the comments what the solution should be overall for this pond because I have a feeling the only way that we're gonna get this thing to be sustainable and have water year round as if we hit like a, a well. Hopefully they fall for this. If this doesn't work, then we'll have to break out the same net and see if we can corner them in, in one of the creeks and scoop them up with a bigger net. So we'll probably use this to transport from the pond to the truck where the igloo's at and should be pretty straightforward. I don't know, this might be difficult. Luckily we've got Caleb filming to help today too. So this is definitely gonna be a two man job. This is just depressing. You can see where the old creek used to be, right here. All the water would come down through this area into the pond, and the other little creek, creek channel is over there. Oh, my poor pond. Looks like a wasteland. This might be what we have to resort to today, using the same net, do some commercial fishing out in the pond. Caleb and I just realized, or maybe you knew it the whole time and didn't say anything, but we don't have sticks for this, so I gotta go figure out how to tie up some poles to this. This is how long it'd be. Oh, it's got weights on the bottom, floats on the top and you're just saying the fish through. If they don't want to eat the lure today, we're gonna to have to resort to this. First things first though, let's get the igloo full of fresh water. Just get prepared. We wanna make sure everything's set up before we get a fish out of the water because once we get the fish out of the water, it's gonna be absolute mayhem. I just know how it's gonna be. Oh. That's probably this year's spawn. We've already identified one dead fish. This is the six pounder I was telling you guys about that we stocked earlier this year. He might have shrank a little bit, poor guy. Should we mount him? Can you imagine that, getting a mount of this little dude? This video gets 20 likes. <laughs> if this video gets 5,000 likes, I'll freeze this guy and we'll bring him to a taxidermy and see if we can get him mounted. Always remembered, never forgotten, poor little dude. Literally spawned this year, had to have been, because I never put any fish that big in there. I do catch small fish, but not this small. I just froze him. I'm being dead serious. I will get that fish mounted. I just need to find a taxidermist. taxidermist? Taxidermist. I need to find a dermatologist to mount that though, because I feel like no one's gonna take me seriously. First of all, I'm probably gonna have to pay full price for that bass, but whatever. Anyway, 5,000 likes, that's all it's gonna take for me to get that thing mounted. Dude, everything in Texas is mud. Mud and clay, oh my God. Hang on, I got this. Okay, one step at a time. Oh, there we go. It was full of water. We just have to wait now for the okay for my neighbor to go over there and start dumping the bass in the new home. I don't know if we're gonna be able to catch them on rod and reel. I think we're gonna have to either do some bare hand noodling or rely on this. I wish it was a little bit longer. It's definitely tall enough. 20 feet long, three feet high, something like that. Should be good. We didn't get this thing for nothing. Probably gonna end up using it today. Here we go. I'm gonna try to catch one. Starting off subtle with a little swim bait. A little saucy swimmer. A little saucy swimmer. Come on fish, if there's any left in there. Please eat this. You'd think they'd just be suicidal for this right now. I haven't fed them in, mm, do I dare say, probably over a month. But they've done fine on their own for the most part. It's just the pond that's letting them down. Not me, not as an owner, I'm a great owner. I just don't know how to build a pond, apparently. Strange. No bites. Well, I just broke off. <laughs> Things are going good. Things are going really good. Caleb, I think, um, I think we're gonna have to go in. I think we're gonna have to get a little messy. There's not too many places they could be either. Like they're gonna be right in here. Here's the other thing too, is they might have all died. That's a very strong possibility too. I didn't even think about that. They're probably like, what the hell is this kid doing? He hasn't fed us in two months, now he's throwing us a, a piece of plastic. I'm sorry, I'm not a very good parent. I just need to own up to the fact that I'm a fish parent. I think it's official. We're gonna have to do this the hard way. Couldn't catch him on the little swim bait or the big swim bait. Granted, I only took like 10 casts, but 10 casts is enough for me to realize that 
they're not they're not as hungry as I thought they'd be and they're not as aggressive we probably spooked them a bit too with the bucket so we're gonna have to get down and dirty hop in the water and start saying these guys out if even there is any bass in here I'm starting to actually have my doubts I've not seen anything I haven't seen a bluegill I haven't seen a minnow nothing not a peep <sighs> these are sad days these are sad sad days at the backyard pond here we have it we've got our seine net all set up thankfully I had some push poles in the barn that we're gonna use as uh, tie downs for each end. What's nice about this too is once we're done using this to catch fish, we can set it up as a uh, volleyball net and play badminton and volleyball. It'd be pretty sick, honestly. You know, just trying to think outside the box, but I'm hoping this works though, because if this doesn't work, I don't have a plan C. Plan C is basically like noodling or maybe dynamite. And then that kind of defeats the purpose, I guess though. I don't know, I'll think of something. Hopefully this is the answer though. Looks pretty sick, very legit. I bet you anything's ponds in the 50s, which may not sound like much, but a wet 50 degrees doesn't feel nice. Gilb's from Florida, so he fits right in on dumb missions like this, dumb ideas that I have. Florida man. Florida man. Shoot him. Or is that Louisiana? Louisiana. Uh, same thing. Swamp people. Swamp people. Shoot him. Shoot him, Liz. In this case, it's net him, Liz. I'm going in. Let's, uh, Get her stretched out before we hop in. All right, net in position. <laughs> oh my God, dude, it is way colder than I thought. This is freezing. All right, we're good, we got this. Oh, I'm freezing. Please don't get any deeper than this. Oh, it's getting deeper than it. It's getting deeper. Why did I take this side? Oh, okay, we got this. Oh wait, maybe you have the deep side. <laughs> you definitely have the deep side. Okay. I'm swimming. <laughs> is it that deep? Or are you just in the mud? <laughs> oh no, GoPro's going in. Stretch out a little more on your end. <sighs> Did we get anything? Keep going, keep going. Nothing? Not even a little. What? Oh, oh no, we did have, oh, we have, we have something. Little bass, there was a little bass in there. We're gonna have to go again. I hate to say it. How do we get the fish out of here? Let's try one more time, and then if that doesn't work, we might have to get cast net. Let's try pushing that way, maybe. There might be some like in the reeds over there. Oh God, it's like it got deeper. <laughs> it literally got deeper. Oh, I see bubbles. Something might've just kicked right there. Keep it coming all the way. Nothing. Well, that was miserable. Let's push up against this real quick. Okay. Just go on this side and push up on this side. Let's go really slow. There's, there's a lot of bass in here. There's tons of crappie in here too, a bluegill. Like if I think if it was dead, dead, We'd Ooh, be. What was that? Did you get hit? It didn't move. Something moved. <laughs> Fish or turtle? I have no clue. I felt, I felt saw. I think it was a turtle. I mean, there's crappie in here. There's big bluegill. I don't see how everything could die. Yeah, just to keep going about this pace. Or keep the bottom part of the pole all the way to the bottom until we got it right here. Yeah, frog. Oh, here you go. What do you got? Fish? Yeah. What is it? A little bass. A little bass? Baby bass? Oh, nice. Is he alive? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, well, we got one. Not exactly what we're after, but it'll work, I suppose. Let's uh, go get a cast net, I guess. Oh, oh, there's another bass. I'm gonna carry these guys. All right, we got two little bass. It's better than nothing. I was hoping for more, but that'll do. Well, that did not work. Tried catching them with the rod and reel, that failed. We then did next what I thought was a foolproof plan, and I was running that 20 foot net, which you guys saw us do back there, and uh, that also did not work either but we're on to plan z shout out to caleb for um grabbing this net at academy he went back to academy to grab this cast net unfortunately it's only a four foot cast net so <laughs> we're gonna have to really work for this and if that doesn't work i don't know i might have to bring out like a vacuum cleaner and suck up all this water or something because it's not looking good it's so easy it's so funny before all this it was very easy to get a fish to eat a shad off of a piece of braid like no problem but now that the water's taking a toll in the pond is starting to really suffer it's been difficult i don't know where the fish are they may not even be there anymore I'm, I'm not really sure but we're gonna try our best at the very least we have two little bass and uh thankfully caleb knows how to throw a cast net so fingers crossed wish us luck so you've thrown a cast net before oh yeah but it was a little bit bigger than that i'm guessing oh, yeah. we may have to take a couple of shots at this because it is only about a four foot net which means it goes four feet across um my pond is far bigger than that so Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a whirl. See if it works. Fingers crossed. 
Oh God, it's so small. Do we have weight? Yeah. Anything? No. All right. Well, this is it. We're we're through Plan A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. We let the pond rest for a bit. Maybe these fish will settle down. I'm gonna try to take a couple casts, and if that doesn't work, Caleb and I went and picked up an eight-foot cast net. I don't know how to throw it, but thankfully Caleb's from Florida. He knows how to take a cast. We're running out of daylight. We still have not caught in a big fish to relocate out of this pond. Every single day, this thing just wastes away. So. We're trying to help these fish, but they won't let us. See if we can make it happen. I'm gonna take a couple casts. Maybe now that they're calm, we can hook one. If not, we got the cast net. I'm seeing stuff move around though, which is good, a little bluegill. So they're back on their spot. There's just a couple right in the shallow. Maybe they want some on the bottom. Hope I have one. I actually have one. He's got it. Oh, I lost him. Oh, I just had a fish. Are you joking me? First cast. This has been such a struggle. It's like one of the hardest videos I've ever filmed. I have a better shot of catching a 10 pounder on Lake Fork right now than a one pounder in my stocked pond. Where these fish are hand fed and trained to eat out of my out of my palm. Oh, what, a, what a grinder. What an absolute grinder. Fit first cast. That, was that, that might be one. Yep. Got him. There we go. There we go. Here we go. Come on, buddy. Come with us. Oh, nice one. Nice one. All right, we've got one saved. Let's put him in the live well. Yes, let's go. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we did it. One down. If we can at least get one today and then maybe a couple more another day, that's mission success in my book. Absolutely swallowed it. He's not hooked too bad, not in the gills. Should be straight. Let's get the aerator going. Here's the aerator reason. I got a big stone so it doesn't bump around on the car right there. Just gonna turn this on and hook straight. Put it there. We finally got one. Just had to let him rest for a bit. I think the cast net might have been too much. And then when we got in the water too, I think they're a little too fired up. But if we can rescue one fish today, maybe another one the next day, that's fine. Working in slow increments here. Oh, it feels so good. All right, try again. Got another bite. Got him. Ooh, that feels pretty deep. Oh, he just came off. Ooh, that might have been a big one. That might have been a big one. That might have been a big one. Damn, how did I lose that fish? That one felt pretty big. See, I knew there was more fish in here. I just don't know how we didn't get them with the same net. You thought, you know, two strapping young lads go across this pond with a 20-foot net. You'd think we'd catch something you know, significant, but all we had was like a bluegill and a couple of tiny bass. Well, we've got one little Jimmy, caught him on the rod and reel. Caleb's not gonna do his magic, we're switching roles, I'm filming. He's gonna pick up the cast net. We've not used this cast net before. Um, it's been at eight, it's at eight foot. The original one we had was a four foot. So this should be, I don't know, we should be at a bit of an advantage here. Our bass is doing good though. He's just down there chilling. Nice little one pounder. There's like a six pounder in there somewhere. I don't know where he's at, but that last one I hooked was, I felt good, felt decent. I want to get the big ones out. The little ones I'm obviously worried about. All bass lives are equal, but big one, I definitely want to get them out of there because I, I specifically remember that fish. That fish actually was caught by my buddy, I think Kyle? My buddy Kyle caught that fish and he brought him back. Well, cast net, eight foot cast net in the pond. Not deemed successful. I'm really surprised, man. These fish are cunning. They're a lot more wily than I anticipated, but that's okay, we got one. If we can get one per day, one every other day, that's fine. There's not that many bass in there. If we can, you know, just get on the edge and, and try to catch a couple and find a new spot, then we should be good. Um, in other news, the whole neighbor thing fell through. So I'm not gonna be able to bring this fish to a neighbor, but I did find a viewer who uh, was so kind to be like, hey, listen, you can put any fish that you have in my pond. He actually asked how much it would cost. I'm like, dude, totally for free. I don't really, you know, I want these fish to have a better life and a much better water system. And he showed me his lake on Google Maps. And it looks like it's a much healthier body water than mine. So we're gonna head over there with our one little bass. And uh, you know, this is a start. Hopefully, you know, we can make this kind of like a little mini series while we're not fishing or doing other bigger projects. But yeah, I think this guy, even though he's grumpy right now, will be a lot happier once he gets into his new home. So anyway, let's head on the road. Bring him, uh, bring him to his new, to his new bass palace. His his ballast. <laughs> How's it going? What's up? Chase. 
sir. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet Thanks you. for doing this on such short notice. Oh, so is this all your land? Well, this is his. Oh, and then nice. that pond right there. That's really cool. There. Yeah, I noticed it on Google Maps. Looks sweet. Yeah. When so do you, do you guys have a well then too, or does it lose a bit of water? No, it, it's a little bit low right now. Yeah. It was like we're in Texas right here. Doing a little bit of off-road in the 250. Going to the pond. Wyatt and Chase, shout out to you boys. They're actually, a, I don't know if they're of age, but they're boozing up. They're getting a little twisted on some Mickeys. I love it. That's my kind of vibe. Nice little Texas afternoon. Stocking some bass and drinking some Mickeys. It's not the biggest pond you've ever seen, but it's bigger than mine. It's got more water than mine, for sure. Up in Gainesville? Yeah, up in Gainesville. This one's got spots. All right, boys, well, got a new home. You got a new pet, boys. You ready? Hopefully, he's hopefully he's like got good genetics and he's just small right now. There you go, buddy. Oh, come on. What are you doing? He's like, oh, finally, an actual lake. Thanks, guys. <laughs> You're awesome. legends. I appreciate it. You just saved the bass's life. <laughs> Hopefully we can save one at a time and like I said, we got to figure out our pond situation. We're trying to get a pond to look like this, but this is the first time I've ever done anything like this, building a pond, making something that bass can live in. So we're going to we're gonna hit some hiccups and some bumps down the road, but for the meantime, we'll uh, try to fix and mend what we uh, what we started and that is getting these fish out of, out of my ditch into something a little bit bigger than this, but that's cool. Hopefully it uh, grows up to be a 10 pounder. Wow, Wainers, mission accomplished. Huge shout out to those boys. Will, Chase, and Matt. Matt, not, not a boy, he's a grown man, but shout out to you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it because of you. Saved a bass's life. Saving bass one day at a time, one cast at a time. You know, I learned some valuable lessons and we're not done with this pond thing. We're gonna keep this into probably a little mini series. Each day we're gonna try to progress to make it an actual viable mission so we can have a beautiful backyard pond like we did earlier this year earlier this year it was amazing paths were flourishing the water was high it was clean the bass were feeding into my hands now it's just kind of like chernobyl it's sad but anyway i'm peacing out signing out thank you guys so much for watching if you have any more suggestions or ideas for the pond be sure to drop a comment down below and we will absolutely make it happen thanks to the view and we'll catch you on the next one as always folks keep fishing never stop